Hello, I'm Dennis with Wildwood TV Lift Furniture. Today we're going to set up a TV lift bed with a deluxe mechanism. And if you have any questions during this process, go ahead and give us a call. So we'll go ahead and get started. First thing I've done is I've got it all in the room and I'm going to find a hardware box that's, or a mechanism box that contains the hardware. As you open that up, you'll find a, a smaller white box. And within that white box, there's, a, there's an envelope that has um, hardware that we've included. That's the first thing I'm going to want to find. So we're going to go ahead and get started with putting the rails together on this bed. I'm going to go ahead and install the rails. So I'm going to get this first rail and you'll notice it has a kind of a bracket with some posts on this end and then the, and then the, the, the headboard and footboard will have these slotted, these kind of these oblong holes. I'm just going to, I'm just going to go ahead and slip that into those holes. It kind of starts at the top and then it will slide down to the, the base. And then my assistant is going to be doing the bottom at the same time. So I have to make some minor adjustments there and get that in. One thing on these, these is you'll want to just make sure that you've, you've th this, it's kind of a slotted hole there. And I just want to make sure that that is pushed down as far as possible. And as a matter of fact, you can, with a soft sole shoe, you can kind of just knock that down and make sure that that's in place. Okay, now I'm going to go do the same thing on the other side with the second rail. <clears throat> Get that lined up and into that slotted hole. And you'll, no you'll notice when it's kind of sliding down into that, um, into those slots. I'm just going to go ahead and push that down and just make sure that that, sometimes it even helps to kind of rock the uh, headboard or footboard back and forth just to make sure that it's kind of sliding down. Okay, now from the, uh, from that hardware packet that I had mentioned earlier, I have found um, four three quarter inch pan head screws so that they're just a, a Phillips screw. It's kind of a rounded head, three quarters of an inch long, and there's four of them. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to secure this rail to, in, in, to this, this plate by running a screw that actually goes through both the plate that's connected to the headboard and also the one that's connected to the rail. And there's a hole in the center. And then those two holes should line up. If those two holes are not lining up, you're going to have to work to get this down a little bit, this, this rail a little deeper into these holes. And again, sometimes moving the headboard back and forth, kind of stomping down with soft sole, soft soled shoes. I'm just going to go ahead and anchor that in place. There's one down here on the footboard. And this will just really hold it in place. And then I'm going to go do the same thing on the other rail. The next step will be to install the hardwood slats. Now this is a king size bed and so each slat is going to have two holes that will accept these legs. If you've bought a queen it will have one hole per slat, a foal will have one hole per slat and a twin won't need any at all. One side has kind of a barrel nut, the other side does not. We're going to come from the, the side that does not have the barrel nut and just thread those, those legs in until they're tight. And I'll do this on all, all of the, uh, the slats so that I'll have, again, there's four slats. I'll have, uh, I'll have two legs on each. Okay, now I'm going to just position these slats. There's four of them. And, and there's, a, there's a recess that's been, that's been cut out of the side rail that will allow this slat to sit right down in there. Okay, now from that same hardware pack that we've been using, I'm going to find eight of these inch and a quarter wood screws to attach these slats to the rails. I'm just going to screw that down. I'll do the same thing on the other side and then just repeat this process three more times down this, down this, uh, this rail system. Okay, with my slats all installed, now from that same hardware pack I'm going to find a four millimeter um, Allen wrench that, that came with your packet. I'm going to go ahead and just lift open this, the, the TV lift lid here. And in, inside here you're going to find a panel. And that panel is going to have a couple of, of uh, furniture connector screws that are just connecting that panel to the, to the outside of this footboard. And then we're going to connect the mechanism to that. So I'm just going to remove that with that Allen wrench. Obviously I'm going to hold on to these, these furniture connector screws that I've just pulled out. And then I'm just going to lift, kind of wiggle and lift this panel out. 
and that will allow us to connect the mechanism to this. All right, now we're going to go ahead and mount the mechanism to the mechanism panel here. And, I, and I've gotten back to this, uh, this hardware pack that we've been pulling uh, hardware from. And now we're going to use the, the rest of them. What you're going to end up using is there's a couple of uh, inch and an eighth pan head screws, so a little bit longer. And then there's a couple of half inch screws. And then there's some 5 8 inch machine screws that we're going to mount the mechanism to, to this mechanism panel. So just wanted to go through a couple of things here that we'll, that we'll be using um, out of this small, um, small white box from the mechanism. There's a, there's a control panel or a control box here and, and, it, and you'll, you'll know it's just a square box. And then within that, within that same uh, bag, you're going to find a remote control. The remote control will be important for raising and lowering uh, one of the ways that you can raise and lower the mechanism. I'm going to set that up here because we'll be using that in a minute, so we don't want to lose that. And then there's a, a power supply that we'll, we'll mount, and that's just got a short wire that comes out of it. There's a, there's a bracket that holds that power supply, and, and then a, a power cord itself. So, and, and we'll go over a couple other things in this box as we get to them. So, what I'm going to do is take out uh, these two panels that are TV brackets. And I'll, we'll, we'll talk about more of this in just a minute. And then there are some lift brackets, gonna, just some long bars, there's two of those. All of these are going to be needed when we start mounting the TV here in just a minute. Now I'm to the mechanism. And this is the deluxe mechanism, and you'll know the deluxe mechanism because it's about 29 and a half inches long. And we're going to mount that first to this mechanism panel. So I'll go ahead and lift that out. And I'm just going to set it on this mechanism panel. And I'm just going to line it up with the, the first two holes up at the top, and then the last two holes down here at the bottom. And then I'm going to use the 5 8 inch screws that I had pulled from that hardware pack we've been using. Okay, now I'm just going to mount this mechanism to this panel by running some of these 5 8 inch machine screws down through the brackets on the, the mechanism and into the T-nuts that are on the back side of this, this panel. You'll know that you've got this panel the right side up because it's finished on the one side and then the, and the bra and the, uh, those T-nuts are on the, on the back side. And I'm just going to go ahead and put all these in. Now you can just use regular screwdriver too on, on these. And as you tighten them down, just, just snug them up. They don't have to be super tight. We're, just, we're not trying to pull those T-nuts through that, that panel. It just, we're just tightening it to where it's tight. Okay, next we're going to install the, the control box. The control box on the bottom of it says DC input and motor. And it, it mounts right down here in these two pre-drilled holes where, where they've been started to be pre-drilled. And I'm gonna make sure that that DC input and the motor face the mechanism. And I'm gonna use the two um, inch and an eighth screws and just go down through that and again just tighten it just doesn't have to be super tight we're just kind of just pulling it snug to this panel and then I'll move on to the power the power supply with that short cord and that's going to sit right here and you're going to use this bracket that goes over the power supply and then the two half inch screws down into those holes that have been started there and I'm just going to want to make sure that the end of this this uh, power supply is about at the end of this pop out or this this edge of, of the, the panel here. Now I'm just going to take this wire um, out of the out of the power supply and plug it into DC input and that should leave plenty of room for this mechanism to operate. And then I'm just going to take this wire that comes off the bottom of the mechanism and plug it in right here to the bottom of this control panel where it says motor HAL and you'll notice it has a clip on one side that clips up slip it into that fitting and you'll you'll hear it click when that clicks into place and now the power supply from the box just for plugging it into the into an outlet in a home um, is next and we'll go ahead and plug that in to this to this uh, power supply here 
Okay, now I'm going to insert the mechanism panel with all the mechanism components into the footboard. So I'm just going to go ahead and lift this. Now these can be kind of heavy, so you can you can use a, an assistant if you want. Kind of, right, I, I want to do it from this side so you can kind of see what we're doing. We're just going to slip that down in. You'll see at the bottom of this footboard there's a couple of cutouts that will where the, the the tabs from this this control or this mechanism uh, panel will fit right down in, and that'll line it up. Now I'm going to grab those couple of uh, hardware connectors that I had mentioned when, to hold on to and my four millimeter Allen wrench and now I'm just going to reinstall this into the, into the footboard and I'll just go ahead and tighten those up with this Allen wrench. Okay, now with the mechanism panel all installed back into position, the last thing to plug in to the, to the, to the mechanism electronics is this rocker switch. The rocker switch is here on the front and that's how you can manually lift and lower the, the mechanism. And it's gonna plug into that control box in the last, in the last uh, spot that, that you can plug it into and it's on this side. Okay, we're gonna plug it in right here and now I'm standing kind of in the, in the bed's framework here. And then uh, it also has a clip on it. I'm just gonna reach down in there and we'll just plug it in. You'll also hear that click when it, when it plugs in properly. Now we'll start to power up the mechanism by just plugging the plug from the mechanism uh, power supply into one of these outlets in this uh, um, power strip that's mounted on the inside of the footboard. And now I'm going to take the extension cord from the power strip and I'm just going to drop it down through this hole in the bottom of the footboard and then I'm going to draw that through. And then I'll plug this in. I'm going to go, I'm going to go underneath, underneath these um, slats and then plug it in into the home. Okay, now I'm going to use the rocker switch to start moving the mechanism up. You can also use the remote control for moving the mechanism up. Just by clicking it once, the mechanism will come up all the way to its max. You can stop that by just pushing the other way. Now, if for some reason the, this remote doesn't work, which is very rare, but the, the, the mechanism can relearn a remote. And so I wanted to just quickly show you how to do that in case that's, that's the case. Okay, the way that you, you get uh, the, the mechanism to re be reprogrammed to the remote control if that needs to be, I have the control box here in my hand. And you'll notice that right here at the top, and when that's mounted in, in, in on the, the mechanism panel, it, it's to the, uh, to the top right of, of the, uh, the, the, the control box. So it says learner. And, and as you, you can take a, I've got just a ballpoint pen here, or a small, a, a small Allen wrench will work. If you go directly in, uh, there's, a, there's a little button. You just click it once. It just kind of has a little click. And after that's clicked, then you just press one of the, one of the buttons on the remote, and then the, it will relearn the code for the remote control. Okay, now I'm going to go through some, some general ideas on mounting the TV to the mechanism. Now, TVs all vary in, in how they mount and such, um, but we're going to give you some, some different pointers and some different ways to do this that should make this doable. Now, this is the deluxe mechanism, which can hold up to a 50-inch TV, and that's what this is. This is a 50-inch TV. And all of the newer TVs, and especially from the big manufacturers, all use what's called a VESA pattern, which, is, which means where, where, the, where, where, you, where the connections are on the back of the television for mounting it to a wall or mounting it to this mechanism. And in this, in this, in, in this VESA pattern, is 200 by 200, that's 200 millimeters by 200 millimeters, and that's, that's what this one is. Um, and, and essentially, they're about eight inches apart from each other. And as long as the back of your TV has that VESA pattern, where, where the, 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 they're, they're about eight inches apart, or 200 millimeters, then, then it, it might mount directly to the mechanism as is, and I'm gonna go through that very first. And if it doesn't, then there's some other things that we're gonna go through, so, you'll, so we'll be able to get it mounted to this mechanism. The quickest and easiest way to mount it to the mechanism is if it can mount directly to these holes that are on the, on the, on the lift. These are that same VESA pattern. And, but TVs all vary as far as how high or low these, uh, these, these mount. So what I'm going to do is ha hold this TV up and see where it mounts, uh, where I could get to some of those holes. And come down just a little bit right there. Okay, now if you can line up the TV into 
on both, both of the holes, the upper holes and the lower holes, and the TV is no more than one half inch above the mechanism, you can mount it directly to this, this lift of the mechanism. This one we can't because the lower hole is below this, this section. So we're not gonna be able to do that. So we're gonna now show you how to mount it with, with a set of holes that's kind of lower like this TV has. Okay, now I'm going to show the, the lift brackets and the TV mounts and all of that as far as getting this so it'll, it'll mount to that, the, the lift. Um, first off, I wanted to point out that there's a couple of lift brackets. This lift bracket is ultimately going to be installed into this, into this lifting column. Now the thing to know is in order to make any of the TV, any 50 inch TV work, you are only going to use the third hole down, the fourth hole down, or the fifth hole down. So just those three holes are the only options. And this will be the top bar. We'll put one in the bottom too as soon as we get it all situated. But we want to get it, we want to get it gauged by this. So the third hole, fourth hole, or fifth hole. And I'm going to make reference to that here in just a minute as, as I'm putting the bracket on the back of the TV. Okay, now after having discussed mounting the lift bracket to the mechanism itself, that, and, and where that's mounted in that third, fourth, or fifth hole is going to interact with how the, this TV mounting bracket will mount to the back of the TV. The, and, you'll, you, you, and you'll notice that there's a series of holes and slots, and you can use any spot, because even with a washer, you can use one of the bigger areas um, to mount this, these brackets to the back of the television. The goal is to make the TV as high on the mechanism as possible, and still allow the lid to close. And, and the TVs are, are really, we're, we're, we're really maximizing the space that we have in that foot, footboard to make this work. So I'm just going to take this, this, this TV bracket and I'm going to find a couple of holes that I know I can mount into. And if, if, you, can, if you can find a hole, a series of holes that will allow you to be either, the, the bracket is flush with the top of the TV, up to an inch and a half down, then in, in, that, in that scenario, flush to an inch and a half down, you're going to ultimately put the bracket on, on the third hole, and we'll, 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 we're gonna do that here in a minute. If you, can, if you can't get it flush to an inch and a half down, meaning the holes on the TV are further down than that, then the next series, uh, the next opportunity would be um, this bracket from the top of the TV would be one and one half inches down uh, to three and a half inches down, so one and a half to three and a half, and then we're going to use the fourth hole on that bracket. And now if you still can't get it into that, into that parameter, then the next would be from the top of the TV to the top of this lift bracket would be three and a half inches to five and a half inches. That would put the bracket clear at the bottom of the TV, but, but that would then mean you're going to use the fifth hole up there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this bracket. I'm going to line it up on the very bottom hole and I'm gonna measure and that puts me at two and three quarters, which means that I'm in that second area, which was inch and a half to three and a half, or, or, and, then I'm, and so I'm going to use the fourth hole up there. So that would be the first opportunity. Okay, back to the mounting hardware that came in that in, in the bag in in the in the mechanism box. Um, there's there's a series of lengths and also uh, diameters. This particular TV is going to take the smaller diameter, and I want this mounting bracket to be mounted as close to the surface of the back on this, this TV as possible. And so what I've found is in this particular situation, the smaller machine screw. Um, works just great. So I'm just going to go ahead and thread that down. It's going to tighten down. Um, they also give you some spacers and some washers, and we're going to use a washer here in a minute. Um, if you need to use a spacer, it would be better to use that spacer more as a, uh, more as a washer than as a spacer on the front of this bracket. We don't want the TV to be too far from the front of this front of this, this mounting bracket or else it'll be too close to the face of the, or to, to the inside um, front of the, um, the footboard. All right, so now my second hole up here that I'm gonna put in, it's one of these slotted holes and it's actually one of the larger areas of those slotted holes. So I'm gonna just use a washer and I'll just go ahead and mount that in. Now I'll do the, mount the second one in exactly the same positions. And, and remember, I've got this, this little lever here toward the outside on this one and toward the outside on this other one. So 
and I'm just going to use the same set of screws. I don't need a washer really on this bottom one. The hole is just, just slightly larger than this machine screw. But on that top one, I'm going to use one of these washers because it's in one of those larger slots. If it's in one of those larger slots too, I just want to make sure this is pretty even um, parallel to each other. All right, so I'm going to just tighten these down. And now those TV brackets are mounted to the back of this 50 inch TV. Okay, I've grabbed this lift bracket that I'm going to mount into the appropriate hole based on that, that measurement that we had talked about. The, and it, it, this lift bracket comes with a couple of machine screws with a hex head um, pre-installed. I've just backed both those out. And so now I'm just going to go ahead and put this one into the hole that's gonna, going to be appropriate for the measurement on that uh, TV mounting bracket to the top of the TV. All right, got that mounted. And now I'm gonna mount the TV on there. Okay, now we're going to test the TV in those positions. I've got a helper here. I'm just gonna kind of hold that over there. And he's just going to latch that. The, the top of this bar, the flat part of this bar is going to just slip right down into that groove. It's just gonna hang on that. Now there will be two of them all in the end, but right now we're just testing. So we'll just wanna make sure that the, uh, that the TV goes down and that all the way and that the um, and that the lid closes. Okay, so the TV clears and and the lid fully closes. Okay, now we're going to raise the TV and go ahead and put on the second lift bracket on the mechanism. Okay, now I'm, I'm adding the second lift bracket and it's four holes down from, from this, or the fourth hole down. So one, two, three, fourth hole. And that's where I'm gonna put the second lift bracket which will then line up with the TV bracket. So I'm just gonna put those on and tighten that up. And then I'm gonna get my assistant and we're going to set them onto these brackets. Okay, now with the TV mounted, I'm just gonna go ahead and rotate these little arms up. They kind of clamp onto that bar. And then, and then the last thing to do will just be to plug the TV in to the power strip inside the footboard and then turn the TV on and we're done. We hope that this video has helped in the, the setup and installation of the TV lift bed. And if you have any questions, just give us a call at the number at the bottom of the screen.